Twinkle, twinkle, little star. You must have heard this poetry. So today, let us have a closer look at space and satellites. On this occasion of Children's Day, we, the students from the junior college, would like to present something exciting and informative. Good afternoon, everyone. I, Master Swam Mishra from 11th A Science, would like to carry forward this presentation. I would like to start speaking on satellites. So students, let us see what a satellite really is. A satellite is a heavenly body that revolves around a particular uh, an another planet in a fixed orbit. You can understand that by the word Parikrama in Hindi, or that also means going around a number of times. We have mainly two types of satellites. One is a natural satellite, like the moon, that is a satellite of the Earth. As you can see in this visual, the moon is revolving around the uh, Earth in a fixed orbit. The second one, as you can see here in the next slide, is an artificial satellite. This is a man-made machine that revolves around a particular planet in a fixed orbit, same. We utilize artificial satellites for various reasons like navigation, communication, Earth observation, etc. The second question that comes to our mind is why do countries launch so many satellites? We need to elaborate on two things in the context of this question. We need to understand that each country needs to launch their own satellites for all the communication services, ATM machines, televisions that you watch, various cartoons and channels, uh, the telephones for the communication across uh, various nations and states, etc. to work in their country. So all the countries launch their own satellites for the sake of their own country. So it is like a private, uh, it is like a private connection for each country. Secondly, we need to talk about the research factor. In order to progress and develop, humans carry out res various researches uh, related to science, related to life. Uh, there is a competitive environment or basically a race, as you call it, between various nations to land their own satellites on various celestial bodies like the Mars, Moon, etc. by developing new and advanced technologies. So these are the two reasons or uh, basically the answers to these questions. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Manchi Sirvi from Lavente Science and I am going to explain you all about the role of satellites in space as the celestial bodies. So now let's get started. So, as we have seen in the earlier slides that what uh, are the two types of uh, satellites. So let's move on to the next. So now if we see the moon, total number of moons around each planet which are discovered by uh, Earth satellites. So let's start from the Mercury and Venus. These planets have zero number of satellites discovered till now. Earth has a satellite that is a moon. What are the natural satellites? These are basically the moon. So we are discussing here the number of moons as the natural satellites. Mars has two number of moons discovered. Jupiter has 79 number of moons discovered. Saturn has 82 number of moons discovered. Uranus has 27 number of moons discovered. And Neptune has 14 number of moons discovered. So till now we have seen everything about the satellites. So let's move on to their orbits. That how the satellite revolves around a planet in a fixed orbit and why don't they fall off? So yeah, let's get started. So the types of satellite orbits according to the inclination. Inclination is nothing but in this part the uh, angle created by the satellite from the reference of the equator. So we'll start by the types of satellite orbits. First is a equatorial orbit, second is the polar orbit and the third one is the inclined orbits. Talking about the equatorial orbits, when the satellite rotates in an orbit directly with reference to the equator creating a circular path orbit. So in equatorial orbit there is an horizontal orbit like uh, there is a fixed distance from the center that is a uh, earth towards the orbit. So in this they create a circular path as you can see in the visual that there is a satellite which is rotating in the continuous distance. So now next is the polar orbit. Polar orbit in this they create a perpendicular that is 90 degree angle towards the equator and they are more likely to be close at the north and south pole. Like if you can see in the visual that there is a vertical orbit shown to you with reference to the equator. Then uh, there you can see the flag 
of the reference from equator then next is a inclined orbits so inclined orbits are the all orbits which don't create a horizontal or a vertical motion for the orbit so yeah you can see in the visual that there are numerous satellites uh, orbit and uh, there is no fixed reference for them so yeah let's move on to the next slide so yeah here we will discuss let altitude altitude means the height means at what height we can send the satellites for our research and other purposes so there are three ranges of heights as uh, we can also say that low earth orbits medium earth orbits and the geostationary earth orbits these are also called as leo meo and geo talking about the low earth orbits that is leo they can kept at a distance of about 160 to 2000 km away from the earth surface and like uh, now talking about medium earth orbits they are placed at a distance of about 2000 km to 5786 km above the earth surface like these are the medium earth orbits so next is the geostationary earth orbits these orbits are the farthest one because they are placed at a distance of about 35,786 kilometers directly over the equator means and they also uh, take a period of revolution around the earth so low earth orbits in these orbits the satellite takes about 90 to 120 minutes for one revolution around the earth while medium earth orbits these take six hours for the one revolution and geostationary earth orbits these take almost 24 hours to complete a single revolution around the planets so yeah next we will go to the types of shapes which orbit forms so first is a circular orbit circular orbit in this we can imagine or assume a circle with a center earth and the shape or the edge of the circle there is a orbit in which a satellite is revolving around the center so if we take the distance from the center towards the edge will get the same distance at every point of the edge so here's the same only in the circular orbit from earth to the satellite will get the same distance at any point where the satellite reach and now there are the circular orbits are of three types geostationary orbit which we have learned previous polar orbits and equatorial orbits now elliptical orbits in elliptical orbits they are not a fixed distance of a satellite like they are having the two points one is the most farthest point and the other one is the closest point towards the planet or uh, if we are seeing in reference then it's towards the earth elliptical orbit these create a ellipse like a oval shaped orbit so in this the closest point when the satellite comes like if you can see now the satellite is coming closest to the earth so that point is called as the perigee and the farthest point when the satellite goes up that point is called as the apogee so here till here we have discussed about the types of orbits in which these uh, satellites rotate now let's move on to the next slide so here types of artificial satellite till now we have discussed about the types of uh, natural satellites now let's begin towards the artificial satellite so artificial satellites these are divided into three categories first is the navigation satellite second is the weather satellite and third is the communication satellite you can also know the navigation satellite as we daily use a gps and location for uh, finding some areas you will get a detailed information about it in the next pvd so now weather satellites as we know uh, this is an making a prediction or alert if there are disaster will happen or not or there are the climate conditions of a particular place communication satellite these are very uh, known uh, known satellite like for uh, as you can see in the visual for calling also first we have to use the satellite like uh, for the single call so now let's begin to the next slide so yeah here for to launch a satellites we need some satellite launch vehicles which will make a satellite launch or revolve around a single orbit so yeah as you can take an example of a gun like if you want to shoot a target uh, that is from a bullet what your main function is the bullet which you have to shoot but for that a gun is required same way we are having a bullet as a satellite and the space launch vehicle as a gun so now 
in this indian space agency we are having the five types of satellite launch vehicles these are the slv3 aslv pslv axel gslv mk2 and gslv mk3 now these satellites are basically based on the weight of a satellite like in the inner indian space agency these vehicles are can weigh up to 17 tons to 640 tons like these can uh, make the satellites launch into the orbits from these much weights the maximum weight is 640 tons so yeah let's move to the next slide so now the national space agency of india that is the isro indian space research organization the indian space research organization was founded by Dr. mr vikram sarabhai on a independence day in the year 1969 the headquarters of isro is in bangalore and the present administrator of isro is kalaswadevu shivan and the parent organization of isro is department of science so now you can see in the visual there's a logo of isro and down to it there's a image of the isro lab no so now if you know that there was a last mission of isro was the chandrayaan 2 which was for the research purpose of the moon from its back side means where any country has not reached our india was trying to reach at the southern hemisphere of moon cause the northern eastern and western hemispheres of moon they are having the satellites for the research purposes but we are not having any single satellite at the southern hemisphere so we are doing that most grateful achievement for our country to send a satellite in the southern hemisphere but unfortunately we didn't do it we can't uh, make it happen because it was left with a single kilometer of distance and our satellite gone to the other thing so yeah so now let's uh, move on to the types of satellites and their daily uses hello everyone i i shukla from 11b science we all know that science has technology satellite technology has improved a lot and whenever we think or say the word satellite we always think about tracking life outside the earth but we use the help of satellite without even realizing it as now we are conveying the message of satellite through internet we are using the help of satellite to do so let's see how satellite helps us in our day to day lives phones and broadband services when we communicate with others through internet we use the help of satellite to do so similarly while watching tv we use the help of satellite so that it broadcasts that show and movie another way in which satellite helps us is online transactions you might have seen it your parents paying different bills while being at home they did this with the help of satellite and in doing their transactions and it requires a precise timing in doing this transaction another question might arise is how satellite is helpful in communication technology satellite has got big diversity in applications like dth broadcasting television and many other things and looking at this isro indian space research organization is fascinated and wants to recreate this as tele education tele medicine and other different ways students we like to reach our destinations very quickly and we want the easy route to reach there so gps global positioning system is helpful in it gps is a three part system which comprises satellites ground stations and receivers gps there are gps chips in our phones in our laptops and navigating system in our cars to show us the location communication satellite also helps us in analyzing the weather and forecasting it these are done by the process of geosynchronous satellites and polar orbiting satellites geosynchronous satellites are used to detect storms volcanic ash plumes and different other things but how polar orbiting satellite helps us they help us by letting us know that whether the related whether whether the temperature outside is humid dry or cool last but not the least let's see how satellite there's the relation between ai and satellites we all know that ai artificial intelligence is growing rapidly and it helps satellites in a way that it helps to monitor the satellite monitor its health system and analyze its data ai also helps us to show a visual format of any decision going to be made ai also tells us predicts the problems going to be occurring in satellites 
students by looking at all of these points we can make it clear that satellite is helpful to us in an essential manner thank you